know about case fatality rate what does that mean case fatality rate see fatality is the killing power of the disease it is the killing power of the disease and case so what you will do number of deaths because of a particular disease any disease because of any particular disease divided by number of cases because of the same disease number of cases because of the same disease into 100000 this is case, case fatality rate so what is the question which you will get the first question which you will get is that case fatality rate is nothing but the severity or killing power of a disease number 1 and it is mostly ap applicable for acute diseases and number 3 is it is usually expressed in percentage and number 4 is the case fatality rate of rabies is 100% so what i am trying to say if a patient will manifest symptoms of rabies he is going to die 100% 100% death fine if a patient will manifest symptoms of rabies he will die 100% fine so what are the four points which i wanted you to say is that if someone will ask you sir what is the severity or killing power of a disease it is called as it is called as case fatality rate so it is expressed in percentage and it is usually used for acute diseases and the case fatality rate of rabies is 100% you have to remember this for rabies it is 100% see initially we have seen about the mortality indicators and you have one more known as morbidity indicators morbidity so you have to know all these points because you may get an all ex exception question saying that the following are the morbidity indicators except so the first thing is incidence what did i say about incidence incidence is the number of new cases during a specified time in a specified population fine prevalence is the total number of cases which is both new and old cases new and old cases in specified time and specified population clear new cases both new cases and old cases incidence is new prevalence is both new and old in case of notification rates means that disease notification rates if there is any epidemic for that reason you have to notify it to the health sector so that is known as notified notification rates number 3 is attendance rate at opd outpatient department may like what is the attendance every day how many patients are coming and number 4 is admission discharge and readmission rates at hospitals number 5 is duration of stay in the hospital what is the duration of stay in the hospital number 6 is spells of sickness or absence from work this is also known as sickness absenteeism also known as sickness absenteeism so what i am trying to say is that based on all these six factors six indicators we can say that the, we can say the health status of a community we can say the health status of a community so all these are morbidity indicators mortality is death morbidity is disease fine mortality means death morbidity means diseased so for disease we have various indicators which is incidence prevalence we have notification rates for the diseases we have attendance rates at the opds we have admission discharge and readmission rates we have duration of stay in the hospital we have spells of sickness or absence from work fine you have to know all these six indicators because they might ask you in all except question so coming on to lead time see you have in screening you have two things which you have to remember one is screening time screening time and one more is lead time early lead, lead time see initially whenever there is a disease so these are the five crucial stages in the disease the first point is disease onset initially the disease onset happens next you have first possible point of diagnosis next critical point of diagnosis next you have usual point of diagnosis finally you have outcomes which is outcome means signs and symptoms see for example whenever there is a disease initially it enters the body and 
it shows certain symptoms after a due course of time in between these two phases we have a point known as first point of diagnosis we have critical point of diagnosis and usual point of diagnosis in this point usually the disease is being diagnosed so what i am trying to say is that from the disease onset till the outcome we have three points of diagnosis one is first point another one is crucial point another one is usual point see the time gap between the first point of diagnosis to the usual point of diagnosis is sleep time the time gap between first point of diagnosis and the final crucial point of diagnosis is screening time so what i am trying to say is that screening time is short and lead time is long see five things you have to remember in case of any disease onset number 1 disease onset first possible point of diagnosis final crucial point of diagnosis usual point of diagnosis and outcome in this case we have two times one is screening time one is lead time screening time is the time between the first point of diagnosis to the usual point of diagnosis while the lead time is long so it is between first point of diagnosis to the usual point while in screening time it is first point of diagnosis to the final crucial point of diagnosis so you have to remember these two and finally you can remember it by lead time is long screening time is short so now we coming on to sensitivity and specificity see in screening test sensitivity and specificity are two important things sensitivity means it is the capacity to find the true positives specificity is true negatives what does that mean it is more specific it is more used who has the disease who is diseased sensitivity means it is finding who is diseased while specificity means who is not having the disease see this is disease present disease absent test present test absent a b c d see the disease is present the test is also positive you call it true positives they actually have the disease and the test is also positive now the disease is absent but the test is present you call it false positive why why it is falsely positive because the test is positive but the disease itself is not present the next thing is the disease is present but the test shows it is negative so it is false negative and finally test is also negative disease is also absent so it is true negatives so in case of sensitivity we have to remember that we have to know who is diseased in case of specificity we have to know who is not having the disease so what is the formula for sensitivity the formula for sensitivity is true positives divided by disease positive which is equal to a by a plus c these two are disease positives in case of specificity what is the formula true negatives divided by disease negatives specificity true negative divided by disease negatives so this is true negative d and this is disease negative these two which is b plus d while sensitivity is true positive divided by disease positive which is a by a plus c these two fine i hope you got an idea regarding sensitivity and specificity dilesh yes, sir okay fine
எது வரைக்கும் பார்த்தோம் கேஸ் ஃபெட்டாலிட்டி பார்த்தோமா rabies mainly 100%, 100%. 100%. 100%. next we have morbidity indicators morbidity indicators incidence or uh, prevalence no derogation okay. rates for the disease epidemic you know okay attendance rates rate. at opd attendance rates at opd admission discharge and readmission rates at hospital duration okay. of stay in hospital spells of sickness or absence from work okay fine அடுத்து லீட் டைம் அண்ட் ஸ்கிரீனிங் டைம் லீட் டைம் அண்ட் ஸ்கிரீனிங் வந்து ஃபர்ஸ்ட் வந்து டிசீஸ் ஆன்செட் லீட் வந்து ஃபர்ஸ்ட் டிசீஸ் ஆன்செட் நெக்ஸ்ட் வந்து ஃபர்ஸ்ட் பாயிண்ட் ஆஃப் டயக்னோசிஸ் थर्ड வந்து ஃபைனல் கிரிட்டிக்கல் பாயிண்ட் ஆஃப் டயக்னோசிஸ் யூஷுவல் பாயிண்ட் ஆஃப் டயக்னோசிஸ் அண்ட் அவுட்கம் ஓகே அப்ப என்ன லீட் டைம்னா எப்படி இருக்கும் லீட் டைம் இஸ் லாங்கர் ஸ்கிரீனிங் டைம் இஸ் ஷார்ட்டர் ஷார்ட்டர் ஆமா ஓகே லீட் இஸ் லாங் ஸ்கிரீனிங் ஷார்ட் ம் அந்த டைம் வாட் இஸ் இட் இது டிஃபரன்ஸ் எதுக்கோ எதுக்கோ நடுவுல இருக்கு ஸ்கிரீனிங் டைம் லீட் டைம் லீட் வந்து பாத்தீங்கன்னா ஃபர்ஸ்ட் பாயிண்ட் ஆஃப் டயக்னோசிஸ் டு தி யூஷுவல் பாயிண்ட் ஆஃப் டயக்னோசிஸ் will be the lead time yes அது தான் you have to remember see that is the most important thing see it is the between first possible first point of diagnosis to usual point of diagnosis but screening time is between first point of diagnosis to critical point of diagnosis so screening time இது லீட் டைம் இது so lead time is always longer so it is between first point of diagnosis to usual point of diagnosis while screening time is first point to the crucial point varaikum fine yes there okay adut sensitivity specificity la what is the important of uh, sensitivity sensitivity is uh, true positive divided by disease okay ma it is equal to a, a, a by a plus c okay fine idu vandu true negative divided by disease negative so what you have to remember here is that ah ena nyavachukona vandu sensitivity has the ability to find who is disease ah masa specificity is the capacity to find who is not diseased okay so the difference purida so yes, we are more focused on true negative here we are more focused this on true positive here specific okay. sensitivity we are focused on true negative sensitivity we are focused on true positive okay 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 so coming on to the next we have period of isolation see coming on to period of isolation it is required for the period of isolation is required for communicable diseases you have to isolate the persons in case of communicable disease to prevent the spread of this so what you have to remember here so what are the period of isolation for various conditions you have to know it by heart in chicken pox till the lesions are crusted in measles onset of symptoms to 4 days this 4 days after the appearance of rash 4 days after the appearance of rash in cholera it is 3 days cholera and influenza it is 3 days after therapy to tetracycline in shigella and salmonella when you have three consecutive negative stool cultures in case of polio it is 2 weeks in case of adult 6 weeks in case of children tb 3 weeks pertussis 4 weeks meningitis and pharyngitis till 6 hours see you have to know all these things by heart because based upon the period of isolation we are isolating the patients so that the spread of the disease will be minimized so in case of chicken pox you have to know till the lesions are crusted he has to be isolated in case of measles 4 days after the appearance of rash in cholera and influenza we have 3 days of tetracycline therapy in shigellosis and salmonellosis we have three consecutive negative stool cultures in polio it is 2 weeks for adults it is lesser for adults you know two weeks and six weeks for children in case of tb it is three weeks of effective therapy 
in case of pertussis it is 4 weeks in meningitis and pharyngitis 6 hours of antibiotic therapy these are the period of isolation so i want to explain one more thing to you see these her period of isolation which is usually done for communicable diseases so i would also want you to know the difference between isolation and quarantine see isolation and quarantine number 1 you have to know only two differences the first difference is it is done for diseased individuals isolation is done for diseased individuals while quarantine is done for healthy individuals isolation is done for maximum incubation period quarantine is done for median generation time see the difference between isolation and quarantine the isolation is done for the deceased while quarantine is done for healthy the second point is isolation is done for the maximum incubation period while quarantine is done for median generation time so all these are the list of conditions communicable diseases where you have to isolate the patients so coming on to the next see what are the arthropod bond diseases so i am just concerned about few things for example you have four types of mosquitoes anopheles aedes culex and mansoni of that aedes is the most important thing why because it is the one which causes dengue yellow fever and chikungunya so aedes is also known as tiger mosquitoes why they are called tiger mosquitoes because of the stripes present in their body so they are known as tiger mosquitoes so what are the three conditions which has been transmitted by aedes it is dengue yellow fever and chikungunya in sand fly you have to know kalazar which is known as leishmaniasis oriental sore coraya fever and sand fly fever setsi fly you have sleeping sickness it is known as african trypanosomiasis while in dreadwit bug you have chagas disease which is known as american trypanosomiasis these two are important conditions african trypanosomiasis is setsi fly known as sleeping sickness while dreadwit bug it is american trypanosomiasis which is chagas disease in case of louse you can remember it by trip louse t r e p what is t t is trench fever r is relapsing fever e is epidemic typhus and p is pediculosis t r e p trip and soft tick is finally for q fever relapsing fever and kft kft is kaisenur forest disease forest disease fine so based upon the arthropod you have various disorders and i would want you to remember about aedes which spreads dengue yellow fever and chikungunya sand fly you have kalazar oriental sore coraya fever and sand fly fever in setsi fly you have sleeping sickness which is african trypanosomiasis while in redwood bug you have chagas disease which is american trypanosomiasis and laus you have trench fever relapsing fever epidemic typhus and pediculosis while soft tick you have q fever relapsing fever and kft kft is kaisenur forest disease forest disease sorry so i want to discuss about the lepra reaction also you have two types of lepra reactions one is type 1 and type 2 in type 1 lepra reactions i would want you to remember about two things type 1 me it is type 4 hypersensitivity while type 2 lepra reactions are type 3 hypersensitivity what is hsr hsr is hypersensitivity reactions see basically hypersensitivity reactions are four types one 
टू थ्री फोर सो टाइप वन लेपरा रिएक्शन इज टाइप फोर टाइप वन लेपरा रिएक्शन वेल टाइप टू इज टाइप थ्री हाइपर सेंसिटिविटी दिस टाइप थ्री हाइपर सेंसिटिविटी इज इम्यून कॉम्प्लेक्स मीडिएटर इम्यून कॉम्प्लेक्स मीडिएटर वेल टाइप फोर इज डिलेड हाइपर सेंसिटिविटी इट इज नोन एज डिलेड हाइपर सेंसिटिविटी Right. So type one is type four hypersensitivity. Type two is type three hypersensitivity. So what is the drug of choice here? Drug of choice is corticosteroids in type one. In type two also, corticosteroids are used as the first line drug. One more drug you have to remember is thalidomide. What is thalidomide? Thalidomide is a TNF alpha inhibitor. TNF alpha inhibitor. So I have discussed about two lepra reactions, type one and type two. In type one, it is type four hypersensitivity. In type two, it is type three hypersensitivity. Both the reactions you can use oral corticosteroids, but thalidomide you have to remember because it is a TNF alpha in inhibitor, and it is the most effective drug in case of type two hypersensitivity. So coming on to health committees. See, we have various health committees. I just want you to remember just a single point in every health committee. Number one, board committee. It was the first committee which was organized. You have to remember only two things. One is health survey and development committee. Board committee was the one which introduced health survey and development committee, and it also introduced the three million plan. While Mudaliyar committee, you have health survey and planning committee. Mudaliyar committee was involved in all health service and planning committee. And what is AIHS? It is All India Health Service. Mudaliyar committee also introduced All India Health Services. In Chadda committee, in Chadda committee, Chadda was more concerned about malaria and basic health work. Basic. Health worker, Mukherjee. Mukherjee was more concerned about family planning. See, board committee. It is health survey and development committee. Mudaliyar. It is planning committee. Chadda. It is malaria. Mukherjee. It is family planning. In jungle, Bala. It is integration of all the health services. integration of health services kartar singh focused more on multi purpose worker multi purpose worker shrivastav was more focused upon education what is rome r o m e it is reorientation of medical education reorientation of medical education this was given by shrivastav and finally krishnan committee was urban revamping scheme urban revamping scheme was given by krishnan committee to dilesh yes sir hmm. army period of isolation Sir, uh, period of isolation first time the chicken pox, lesions clustered, and uh, measles on the onset of symptoms that is four days after appearance of rash. Cholera on the influence three days of tetracyclic therapy. Figalosis mm. thermonosis on the three consecutive negative stool cultures. Polio two weeks adults, six weeks for children. TB on the three weeks of effective therapy. Pertussis is four weeks and uh, meningitis, pharyngitis until six years of antibiotic therapy. Okay, that's the arthropod problem. Ah, or isolation. Ah, isolation on the diseased people and quarantine for healthy people. This is on the maximum incubation period. This is on the median generation time quarantine. Okay, na arthro adhikar maximum incubation period. Why can isolate? Pannu na arthro. Fine. Ah, yes sir. Okay, that's it. 
క్వారంటైన్ ఉంది మీడియం జనరేషన్ టైం ఓకే ఫైన్ కార్త్రోపోడ్ బోన్ కార్త్రోపోడ్ బోన్ డిసీజ్ ఫస్ట్ వంద ఏడిస్ ఏడిస్ వంద డెంగ్యూ ఎల్లో ఫీవర్ అండ్ చికెన్ గునియా సాండ్ ఫ్లై కాలా సాండ్ ఫ్లై వంద కాలా జార్ ఓరియంటల్ సోర్ ఓరియా ఫీవర్ సాండ్ ఫ్లై ఫీవర్ టెస్ట్ ఫ్లై టెస్ట్ ఫ్లై వంద స్లీపింగ్ సిక్నెస్ ఆఫ్రికన్ ట్రిపనోసోమియాసిస్ లౌస్ వంద ట్రెంచ్ ఫీవర్ రిలాక్సింగ్ ఫీవర్ ఎపిడెమిక్ టైఫస్ అండ్ పెడికులోసిస్ అమెరికన్ ఎల్లెల్లెల్లెల్లెల్లెల్లెల్లెల్లెల్లెల్లెల్లెల్లెల్లెల్లెల్లెల్లెల్లెల్లెల్లెల్లెల్లెల్లెల్లెల్లెల
see this eligible couple is nothing but a couple who is married couple who is married and the female is in the reproductive age group it is women in reproductive age group which is 15 to 49 years so couple protection rate is nothing but how many eligible couples are being protected by the contraception so what is the meaning of an eligible couple eligible couple is nothing but a married couple where the female is in the reproductive age group so what is the target of couple protection rate the target for couple protection rate has to be 60% so when the couple protection rate is 60% we will achieve net reproduction rate of 2.1 so we will come to that later so we have seen two things here one is pearl, in, uh, pearl index and the second one is couple protection rate pearl index is one thing where you can find the failure of contraceptions so the total accidental pregnancy is divided by total months of exposure into 1200 while the couple protection rate is the percentage of eligible couples protected so eligible couple is nothing but a married couple where the female is in the reproductive age group okay so coming on to fertility rates see as we have seen already crude death rate crude birth rate crude birth rate is also total number of live births divided by mid year population into 1000 So for India, it is twenty. I don't want you to remember this. You have to remember this one. What is GFR? GFR is general fertility rate. GFR is general fertility rate. So it is nothing but the number of live births divided by mid-year population of women. of reproductive age group in 2000 see how many live births have been there divided by women in the reproductive age group in 2000 this is general fertility rate in case of age specific what is age for it is age specific fertility rate in age specific fertility rate it is specific for age so number of live births of particular age divided by mid year female population of the same age into 1000 so age specific fertility rate is concerned about a specific age group while general fertility rate is nothing but the number of live births divided by the women in the reproductive age group in the same area So what is GRR? GRR is general reproduction rate. So here you have to remember this point. See, it is nothing but the number of daughters. Number of daughters a woman will bear during her reproductive years. divided by mid year population of female in the reproductive age group so it says that how many daughters a woman will bear during her reproductive years divided by the total number of female in that reproductive age group in the same area into 1000 finally nrr which is net reproduction rate and this is the most important indicator of all the fertility rates because it is a demographic indicator as it is a demographic indicator it is the most important indicator which you have to know so as i have said if nrr is 1 net reproduction rate is 1 the child norm is 2 so if every family has two childs we have to achieve a net reproduction rate of 1 so what does net reproduction rate literally mean it means that the total number of daughters a newborn girl will have here we have seen the total number of daughters women in the reproductive age group will have in net reproduction rate we are seeing that the total number of daughters a newborn girl will have divided by 
same mid year female population of reproductive age group into 1000 so we have seen four major indicators which is general fertility rate age specific fertility rate general reproduction rate and net reproduction rate when i am talking about general fertility rate you have to just know that it is nothing but the number of live births divided by female and the reproductive age group when i talk about age specific it is specific for a certain age group number of live births in a particular age group divided by female population of the same age in case of general reproduction rate grr it is the number of daughters born to a women in reproductive years divided by women in reproductive age group into 1000 when i talk about nrr which is net reproduction rate and it is the most important indicator which is a demographic indicator it is nothing but the number of daughters born to a newborn girl divided by women in the reproductive age group into 1000 fine so coming on to demographic cycle so i want you to remember birth rate and death rates see in case of high stationary and low stationary high stationary the birth rate is very high death rate is very high in low stationary the birth rate is very low the death rate is very low so you are not going to get questions on this in declining the birth rate is very much low compared to death rate what is declining here the population is declining fine so we are concerned about these two things you will get questions in these two stages in early expanding stage the birth rate remains the same but the death rate starts decreasing so what is the first point you have to remember in early expanding death rate starts decreasing in late expanding even the birth rate also will start decreasing fine two things you have to remember in early expanding death rate will decrease in late expanding birth rate also will decrease and currently india is in late expanding stage 3 of demographic cycle late expanding stage of demographic cycle india is present so here we are seeing early expanding and late expanding see the difference between birth rate and death rate forms the demographic curve and demographic curve is maximum in stage 2 so i want you to remember three points number 1 in early expanding the death rate starts decreasing in late expanding the birth rate will also start decreasing and currently india is present in stage 3 or late expanding and the demographic gap is maximum in early expanding fine yes now i want you to know the difference between ors ors is oral rehydration solution and resomal see in resomal you have the presence of magnesium zinc copper so these are micronutrients which are present in resomal and what is the osmolarity it is 300 while the ors osmolarity is 245 osmolarity of ors is 245 while for resomal is 300 in resomal you have magnesium you have zinc and you have copper okay what is sam sam is severe acute malnutrition so you have three criteria for this number one is weight for height this is weight for height less than minus 3 standard deviation bmi is body mass index less than minus 3 standard deviation mid upper arm circumference is less than minus 11.5 cm 
and bilateral pitting edema so if they will ask you what is the criteria for severe acute malnutrition and these four options are given weight for height is minus 3 standard deviation bmi is minus 3 standard deviation mid upper arm circumference muac is mid upper arm circumference is minus 11.5 cm and you have bilateral pitting edema and these four are the criteria for diagnosing severe acute malnutrition so coming on to adulteration diseases you have to know about the toxin and diseases and adulterant in case of dal kesari dal which we use we have a toxin known as boa what is that boa it is beta oxalyl amino alanine uh, lethargic uh, yes so it will cause lethargism fine majorly neuro lethargism so you have here no stick stage the patient is okay you have one stick stage and you have two stick stage and finally complete palsy so either you may get a history of lethargism and they may ask what is the toxin present or what is the adulterant present you have to know that so the adulterant is kesari dal the toxin is beta oxalyl amino alanine and the disease is lethargism in case of oil you have argimon oil so what is the toxin present sanguinarin and the disease is epidemic dropsy and in case of millets you have crotalaria seeds and the toxin is pyrrolizidine and it causes ascites endemic ascites and finally you have bajra and wheat which has claviceps purpura and toxin is clavine and you get ergotism so these four adulteration diseases are very important from the starting kesari dal the toxin is beta oxalyl amino alanine and the disease is lethargism in argimon oil you have sanguinarin the disease is epidemic dropsy in crotalaria seeds the toxin is pyrrolizidine and it is endemic ascites and in claviceps purpurea you have clavine and the disease is ergotism you have to remember all the four by heart so i'll talk about a little of vitamin a supplementation if we we'll see about the national immunization schedule nis national immunization schedule vitamin a first dose is given at 9 months and it is 1 lakh international units 1 lakh international units after 1 year it is given by annually by annually till 5 years till 5 years 2 lakh international units is given so the first dose of vitamin a is given at 9 months 1 lakh international units after 1 year it is given twice a year by annually till 5 years how much is given 2 lakh international units per dose is given so totally 17 lakh international units are given till 5 years see the supplementation between 6 to 11 months usually at 9 months 1 lakh international units is given till 5 years 2 lakh international units every 4 to 6 months usually every 6 months okay so this is a part of the normal supplementation but if there is vitamin a deficiency what is the dosage of that if it is less than 6 months you give 50000 6 to 12 months it is 1 lakh if it is more than 1 1 year it is 2 lakh that is what you have to remember if it is more than 1 year 2 lakh international units so what are the deficiency of vitamin a called it is known as xerophthalmia we will look for the stagings also next i want you to remember is reference male and female in case of reference male and female the age is the same 19 to 39 years the weight is 65 for male 55 for male female height is 1.77 cm 1.62 cm and the bmi is 20.75 and 20.95 you may get a question based on all or the criteria for reference male or reference female except so you have to know the criteria for male and female which is 65 kg 1.77 cm and 20.75 cm 75 bmi 
and for females it is 55 1.62 and 20.95 dma so as i have said earlier the vitamin a deficiency will lead to a condition known as xerophthalmia so you have to know the stagings of that see xn n is for night blindness 1a initially conjunctival xerosis conjunctiva get xerosed what is xerosed mean xerosis means dryness and 1b b is for bite out spot x2 corneal xerosis initially you have conjunctiva you have cornea next 3a is corneal ulceration involving less than one third of the cornea x3b is corneal ulceration involving more than one third of the cornea xs is corneal scar xf is xerophthalmic fundus so what i'm trying to say is that they may ask you a question based upon the stages also they'll give you x1b they will give you a, give you an image of bright out spot and they will ask which stage it is you have to stay x1b fine 1a is conjunctival xerosis 1b is bright out spot 2 is corneal xerosis 3a is corneal ulceration less than 1/3 of the cornea 3b is more than 1/3 of the cornea x is uh, scar and f is fundus so coming on to socio economic scales you have to know majorly about the kupuswami scale so what is kupuswami scale used for it is a socio economic scale to say whether the people or the family is socially stable and economically stable or not in kupuswami scale majorly we use for urban population and you have mainly three things you must know all these three things one is education of the head of the family occupation of the head of the family monthly income of the family so these three things one is education two is occupation these are for the head of the family and three is monthly income this is kupuswami scale and majorly it is and majorly it is used for urban population so coming on to oxidation points in environment i just want you to know about a single point see these oxidation points are a shallow pool of 1.5 depth so meters depth and usually it contains saprophytic bacteria algae and sunlight so other it ferments what is the question here the question is oxidation ponds are also known as waste stabilization ponds redox ponds or sewage lagoons you have to know the synonyms of that all these are synonyms you have to know all these three oxidation ponds are also known as waste stabilization ponds redox ponds and sewage lagoons and based on strength of sewage i want you to know about two things what is bod bod is biological oxygen demand biological oxygen demand while cod is chemical oxygen demand so what is the question here see the organic content of the sewage is measured based on biological oxygen demand organic content number 1 and if it is more than 300 it is easily degradable less than 100 it is not degradable easily in case of chemical oxygen demand it usually measures the oxygen equivalent of the sewage so the question is that what is chemical oxygen demand used for chemical oxygen demand is mainly used for measuring the oxygen equivalent of the organic matter so coming on to suspended solids if it is less than 100 it is weak and more than 100 it is strong so regarding septic tank i want you to remember what four points five points one is the capacity is 500 gallons the depth is 1.5 to 2 meters the liquid depth is 1.2 meters the retention period has to be around 24 hours and desludging has to be done once a year all these are points which we have to remember about septic tank in case of rc latrines the water seal has to be around 2 to 2.5 cm 
RC electrine, the water seal has to be around 2 to 2.5 centimeters. And this is one of the very important topic which you have to know. Composting. See, in composting, you have two methods. One is Bangalore method. One is mechanical composting. So the question is, in Bangalore method, you have hot fermentation process and it is anaerobic. This is the question which you will get. Bangalore method is anaerobic. While mechanical composting is aerobic. In Bangalore method, the trench is not more than 90 centimeters. So what is the criteria for overcrowding? The criteria for overcrowding is that if two persons are staying, they are more than nine years and they are not husband and wife and they are of opposite sex. Opposite sexes, they are obliged to sleep in the same room. You call it overcrowding. This is one criteria. This is first criteria based on sex. Fine. Two persons who are more than nine years, not husband and wife, of opposite sex. So based on room criteria, you have, see, for one room, you have two persons. Two room, three persons. Three room, five. Four room, seven persons. And five rooms, ten persons. So this is based on the number of persons. Number of persons. For one, it is two. Two, it is three. Three, it is five. Four, it is seven. And five, it is ten. And based on square feet or area, for one person, it is 70 to 90 square feet. And you have to add 40 for every other person, 40 square feet. For example, 110 for one and a half. More than 110 for two. 50 to 70 for half. So based on indicators of air pollution, what is the question which you will get? They will give the indicators and they will ask you which is the most important indicator. Sulfur oxide is the most important indicator. Sulfur dioxide is the most important indicator for air pollution. And you one more, uh, all these other indexes are used for measuring the air pollution. You have soiling index or smoke index. You have grit and dust index. You have API which is annual pollution index. Manual pollution index. You have coefficient of gas and you have suspended materials. Suspended. So regarding scabies, I want you to remember only one point. In case of neonatal scabies, the face is involved. In case of classical scabies, which happens in adults, face is not involved. Why? Because of the production of sebum. Sebum is present. So face not involved. Then you have to know about the bioterrorism agents. So category A and C we will learn and the rest will go in category B. Category A, you have B, Bacillus, C, Clostridium, E, Ebola, F, Francisella, Lassa, Variola, and Yersinia. We have B, C, E, F, V, Y, Bacillus, Clostridium, Ebola, Francisella, Variola, Yersinia, and Lassa. All these will come under category A. While Nippa and Hunter. Nippa and Hanta will come under category C. Nippa and Hanta will come under category C. And rest other things will go in category B. So they will give you a direct example and they will ask you which type of bioterrorism agent will it belong to. Either category A, B or C. So triage. See in triage you have to know. It is to prioritize patients. Prioritize patients. In case of disasters, prioritizing for what? Prioritizing for treatment. Who needs treatment first? The red patients are of highest priority. Highest priority. They have to be treated less than six hours. 
while yellow patients are of medium priority they has to be treated within 24 hours green patients are also called as ambulatory patients ambulatory patients are walking wounded patients they are walking wounded they can be treated later also and they just need a mild dressing or something like that and black patients are dead patients or moribund patients which who are brain dead so what i'm trying to say is that triage is a method of prioritizing patients in case of any disaster and you have four colors in that one is red yellow green and black red color is of highest priority where you have to treat the patient within 6 hours for example in case of pneumothorax yellow is of medium high to medium priority where you have to treat the patients within 24 hours you have any fractures or something like that you have to treat and they'll go in the yellow category in case of green category they are called as ambulatory patients they are walking wounded usually so they are of next priority and finally you have black which are dead patients or moribund patients next i would want you to know about this factory sect see in factory sect we have to remember that the age group to employ factory sect you should not employ less than 14 years less than 14 years should not be employed in case of 15 to 18 years also only four and a half hours work has to be present actually they should not work more than four and a half hours 6 am to 7 pm they have to work and they have to get a leave for 15 days and accumulated leave for 40 days and what is the duration of work for normal adults it is 48 hours per week including overtime it has to be 60 hours and the space has to be 500 cubic feet per person and maternal maternal leave in case of working mothers it is 12 to 26 weeks already the mother has two child 12 weeks in case of adoption you have 12 weeks see this factory act was introduced in the year 1948 and there are certain rules and regulations which has to be followed by the factory act the first thing is that you should not employ children less than 14 years even you are employing in 15 to 18 years you should not the person should not work for more than 4 and 1/2 hours and he has to get a leave for every 15 days and accumulated leave for 40 days and the hours of work for any person in the factory has to be 48 hours per week including the overtime it has to be 60 hours the space has to be around 500 cubic feet per person and regarding the maternal leave it is 12 to 26 weeks if the mother is with two child 12 weeks and even adopted 12 weeks <coughs> so you have various um, officers for example you have a safety officer if your factory has more than 1000 workers you have welfare officer if you have more than 500 workers you have a canteen if you have more than 250 workers and you have creche creche is a place where kids will play like park for kids so if there are more than 50 employees you must need a creche so you have to know all these values because they may ask that how many employees are required for a creche you have to say 50 safety it is 1000 welfare 500 canteen 250 so coming on to family there are many different types of family i just want you to know the basic terms and definitions the nuclear family is one where you have a married couple with their offspring matlab children you have a married couple with their children what uh, in case of a new family new family is a family which is less than 10 years the couple has been married less than 10 years in case of joint family or extended families you have number of married couples and their children and they are living in the same household and they are related by blood joint family means there are number of married couples and their children also they are living in the same place in case of three generation family you have representative of all the three generations in one house in case of communal family see every member in the family plays an important role in the management part of the house problem family means the problem family is one family where they stay behind they lag behind the normal standards and quality of life and broken family is if there is any disruption by separation divorce or death 
all these are known as broken families you might get a direct definition saying that what does a broken family mean or they may give a statement and they'll ask you what does that mean hey the problem family broken family communal family and you may get questions accordingly so finally i'll just touch about phc see phc is the primary health center and what is the population for phc the population for phc is 30000 in case of plains and it is 20000 in case of hilly areas and you have one more term known as uphc which is urban phc and the population is 50000 Two PHC is urban PHC, and the population is fifty thousand. In case of subcenter, the population is five thousand. In case of plains, three thousand. In case of hilly regions, you have two types of PHCs: type A and type B. Type A, you have less than twenty deliveries. Type B, you have more than twenty deliveries. you have four pillars one is equitable distribution equitable distribution intersectoral coordination community participation and appropriate technology appropriate technology so what are the four pillars of primary health care is equitable distribution the sources has to be equally distributed there are various sectors which has to be coordinated the community we has to be participated in a proper way and there is appropriate use of technology so all these are four pillars of primary health care and finally coming on to levels of prevention you have four levels primordial primary secondary and tertiary and these are the modes of intervention these are modes of intervention you have to know that in case of primordial there is only health education in case of primary you have health promotion and specific protection specific protection means examples are addition of iodine in salt screening of immigrants all these will come under specific protection in secondary prevention you have early diagnosis and treatment and screening will come under secondary prevention in tertiary prevention you have disability limitation and rehab you are limiting the disability and you are doing the rehabilitation rehabilitation thanks i hope that's all for today dilesh yes are you there yes sir hmm chalo ma purisha ma basic karpo yes sir divided by female total number of female in the reproductive age group that is what you have to remember demography cycle la you have to remember only two things one is death rate will start decreasing in early expanding birth rate will also start decreasing in late expanding stage 3 and india is currently in stage 3 okay and ors and risomal you have osmolarity 245 and 300 sam is severe acute malnutrition where you have weight for height bmi mid upper arm circumference and pitting edema adulteration diseases are very important which you have to know vitamin supplementation is okay and vitamin a deficiency you have to know about bite hot spot x1b is bite hot spot and kupuswami scale you have three things 
which is education occupation and monthly income and biological oxygen demand is mainly for the organic content septic tank is okay and regarding composting bangalore method is anaerobic overcrowding you have to know the person criteria you have to know it is more than 9 years in square feet it is 70 to 90 for one person and you have to add 40 for every second person and what are the most important uh, indicator for air pollution it is sulfur dioxide difference between neonatal scabies and classical scabies is faces involved in neonatal very important bioterrorism agents where you have category a and category c which you will remember triage for prioritizing patients red yellow green and black red is highest medium ambulatory factory sac not less than 14 years maternal leave for around 26 weeks and have safety officer welfare officer canteen and creche we have seen families where you have to remember about communal family problem family and broken family and regarding phc population upsc population is 50000 subcenter 5000 3000 we have two types we have four pillars equitable distribution intersectoral coordination community participation and appropriate technology and finally the levels of prevention and their modes of intervention health education health promotion and specific protection early diagnosis and treatment disability limitation and rehab fine